Hey there, physical science students. This is Ms. Ruark. This is Vodcast 5.1. It's the first one in the chemistry section of physical science, and it's all about classifying matter. All right, so classifying matter. Well, first, before we can classify it, we have to define it. So what is it? Well, you're matter. I'm matter. We are all matter. And not only are we matter, but we do matter, right? So what is matter? Well, matter is going to be anything that has mass and anything that takes up space. So it has to have mass and it has to have volume. Okay, so three examples here on your screen. You've got chocolate, which would be a solid form of matter. We have water, which would be a liquid form of matter. And we have air, which would be a gas form of matter. Okay, yes, air is matter. It has mass. We know it has mass because we can feel it when it pushes on us. We may not feel it as if somebody came up to you and pushed you. It's not pushing on us like that, but we feel it in terms of atmospheric pressure. That's the weight of those gas molecules laying on us. And sometimes the pressure is higher than it is at other times. Okay? And it all has it, it, it has volume. It takes up space because air fills up whatever container it's going into. All right, so how do we classify matter? Well, here is a tree map that will show you how to classify matter. I did add an extra one that you'll need to add into yours, which is right here. It's an alloy. Okay, well, how do we figure out how to classify this matter? Well, we know that, that matter is the topic, and we can separate matter into two categories, mixture or pure substance. And we can do that based on one question. The question is, can you change the recipe? Okay, so think about it. Can you change the recipe? Well, what about if I had water? Can you change the recipe of water? And you might say, Ms. Ruark, you can make flavored water. Okay, but notice how you're saying flavored water. It's still water, so you're not changing the recipe. The recipe of water is always going to be H2O. Okay, so you would follow the flow chart or the stream map, whatever you want to call it, to determine if it's going to be a mixture of pure substance. If you can change the recipe, yes, it is a mixture. If you cannot, no, it's a pure substance. All right, so let's go through mixtures. The next question you have to ask yourself is, is it the same throughout? Okay, because if it is the same throughout, it would be considered a homogeneous mixture or homogeneous. If it's not the same throughout, it would be a heterogeneous mixture. Okay, so examples, a homogeneous mixture would be something like cough syrup, Gatorade, um, uh, let's see, what else, tea. Okay, these are all examples of homogeneous mixtures. Salt water, uh, sugar water, Kool-Aid, okay, heterogeneous mixtures. Now, in the, in the, the homogeneous mixture examples, you, they're all the same. Every single sip of all of those drinks would be exactly the same. In a heterogeneous mixture, it's not all the same. It has different parts in it, and you can see those different parts. So examples would be salad, um, sugar water. What if I had iron mixed with sand, or sand and salt mixed together, or salt and water? Not salt and water, sand and water. Those would be heterogeneous mixtures because there's different parts, and you can see those different parts. All right, homogeneous solutions or homogeneous mixtures, they can be broken down into three types. You can have a solution, a colloid, or an alloy. A solution is going to be something that is um, something dissolved in something else. Okay, now I'm not going to say solid dissolved in, in liquid because it can also be a gas dissolved in a liquid. Okay, it can be a liquid dissolved in a liquid. It can be a gas dissolved in a gas. It's a substance that's dissolved in something else. And in order for it to be a solution, it has to be um, the particle size that's dissolved has to be small enough that if you shine a light through it, it won't scatter that light and you won't be able to see the light. Okay, now colloid, and we'll go through examples of these shortly. A colloid is anything that has particles in it that are going to be big enough so that if you shine a light through it, you'll be able to see those particles. And then an alloy is actually going to be two or more metals that are combined together. And then they're combined in such a way to enhance one or both of those metals. Okay, and we'll talk about examples of those shortly. All right, and a heterogeneous mixture can be um, just a heterogeneous mixture, but you can also have what we call a suspension. And a suspension is when you have um, a liquid that is holding solid particles and they are suspended. And we'll talk about examples of that in just a moment. 
All right, so if it is a pure substance, a pure substance can be broken down into two types. And you figure out which one it is by asking a question. The question is, is there more than one type of atom? If the answer is no, it's just an element. And if the answer is yes, it's a compound. All right, so let's go through a couple of these examples here. We have gasoline. Can you change the recipe? Well, yeah, you can. You can have diesel, you can have premium, super premium, unleaded. You can change the recipe. Okay, so it is a mixture. Well, the question is, is it the same throughout? And the answer is, yeah, it is the same throughout. So it would be homogeneous or homogeneous. All right, brass. Um, brass, can you change the recipe? Uh, yeah, you can because it's going to be... Brass, if you don't know what brass is, it is a mixture of metals, okay, and you combine them physically, um, and it is the same throughout, so we would say that that's a homogeneous mixture, but since it's metals, it would be an alloy. Carbon, can you change the recipe? No, because carbon is just carbon, it's that, and so it's a pure substance. Is there more than one type of atom? Well, no, there's just carbon in there, so it would have to be an element. Wood. Can you change the recipe of wood? Well, I don't know if you change the recipe, but there's different types of wood, so yes. So it must be a mixture. Is it the same throughout? Well, no. You can cut into a piece of wood and it looks different. So it would be a heterogeneous mixture. All right, do you see where we're going with this? All right, so let's keep going. All right, heterogeneous mixtures. Here's some examples of heterogeneous mixtures. Remember, in order for it to be a heterogeneous mixture, properties of this is you have to be able to see the different parts. And that's why M&Ms are a great example of a heterogeneous mixture because you have all the different colors. They don't look exactly the same. Okay, this sample of weird candy here is an example of a heterogeneous mixture. Fertilizer and soil, mulch, these are all examples of heterogeneous mixtures because number one, you can change the recipe, and number two, you can see all the different stuff in it. Okay, if you look here, it's got white stuff here and it's got long pieces there and it's got some light brown things here I mean, this is different it's all different okay um, a suspension is also a heterogeneous mixture I told you that we talk about this large solid particles that are suspended in liquid if you let them sit over time like say 10 minutes they will fall and precipitate or come and collect at the bottom an example of that would be Italian dressing that's a great example of it, Italian dressing. Okay. All right, what about homogeneous mixtures? Okay, for homogeneous mixtures, you have solutions, colloids, and alloys. Okay, a solution is anything that um, the particles that are dissolved are so small they won't scatter light. And on the other hand, a colloid is where your particles are so large that the molecules do scatter light. So what in the world do I mean by that? All right, well... Properties, let's say first off, properties of a homogeneous mixture are it's the same throughout. It's all the same. Okay, if you look here at this Kool-Aid, it all looks the same. Every step of that Kool-Aid should be exactly the same. Okay, and these test tubes here, all the colors of green are exactly the same. The blue is all exactly the same. The purple is all the same. There's not yellow on top of the purple and then purple and then green. It's all purple. Okay, and this milk, it's all milk. It looks all the same. Okay, so that's how we know it's a homogeneous mixture. Okay, the difference between these two, if you were to take um, a light, this is a light source, and shine it through two samples. These two samples are actually, they look exactly the same. Okay, but this one here, this one here would be a solution because when you shine the light through, you don't really scatter the light. It doesn't really show up and make it look cloudy. It just looks clear and translucent. This one, on the other hand, on the right side, is a colloid because if you see the lights going through, it's being scattered, which means it's showing up more, and it looks cloudy. Okay, so milk is an ex excellent example of a colloid because the solution particles are just kind of there, and they scatter that light. All right, an alloy is going to be a mixture of two or more metals. So here's an example of brass. Brass is um, what most of the trumpets and the, you know, the brass instruments are made of brass. All right, so it's a mixture of two or more elements put together, and you can change the ratio of them slightly. Rose gold is another example of an alloy. Pewter, um, 
What else? Stainless steel is an example of an alloy. Okay, um, bronze. These are all examples of alloys. It's where you take two or more metals, you mix them together to enhance the properties um, of one or both. All right, the difference between a solution, a colloid, and a suspension. So a solution is when you take something, you dissolve it in something else, it creates a solution. Okay? In order for it to be a colloid, it has to have something that, like, particles that are, dissol um, that are dissolved in it that are large enough to make it look cloudy, to make it look cloudy. Um, but here we have a suspension, and this suspension is flour that's dissolved in water, and... The question is, why is this a suspension and this a colloid? Well, the suspension here, these flower particles are large enough that they are hanging, suspended in that water. But if you let them sit, well, let's say five, ten minutes, they'll fall down to the bottom and collect at the bottom, and you'll see clear water. Whereas here in this milk, if we let this sit for about five or ten minutes, the particles won't fall to the bottom. They'll stay there and stay mixed in. All right, pure substances. You can have two types of pure substances. You can have elements or compounds. If it's an element, it has only one type of atom. It is the simplest form, and it cannot be broken down any smaller. These are going to be represented by symbols, okay? And the symbols has one or two letters. The first letter is always capitalized, and the second letter is never capitalized. So if it has more than, if it has one letter, it's always capital. If it has two, first is capital, second is not. Okay, some different examples, hydrogen, helium, sodium, um, fluorine, mercury, etc., etc. All right, um, compounds. Compounds are two or more elements that are chemically bonded. Okay, chemically bonded. They are represented by a chemical formula, and the formula has letters that represent the elements, and the numbers, which are subscripts, these little numbers here, subscripts meaning below, that represent the number um, of each atom, okay, number of atoms of each element. Okay, so in sodium chloride, it tells you that there's one sodium and one chlorine. In water, we have two hydrogens and one oxygen. Okay, in ammonia, here we have one nitrogen and we have three um, hydrogens. Uh, physical states of matter. Almost done. All right, so physical states of matter. We have solids, liquids, gases. You know that there's also plasma, so there's four. There's actually more than that, but we're not going to worry about it. Okay, so physical states of matter. A solid is going to be something that is going to be tightly packed atoms, so structure of the atoms, tightly packed atoms. They're ordered. They're all tightly packed, and can, they're, they're neat. Um, they, they do move. They actually vibrate. So their molecular energy or movement, they do vibrate, but they don't move, per se, because they're bonded. Okay? They have a definite shape and a definite volume, which means they do not change shape. They do not change their volume, the amount of space they take up, depending on what they're put in. They just stay the way they are. Okay? A liquid. A liquid is going to be something that takes the shape of its container, and it has a fixed volume. So it's going to be definite, um, indefinite shape, definite volume. Okay, the, the atoms are kind of close, but they're not neat and ordered anymore. They're just kind of laying wherever they want to go. Okay, they're, if you see here, they're kind of laying on top of each other. Okay, they are still moving, though. They're flowing. Okay, they're flowing. They're able to move past each other easily, but they're not going all over the place because they're still held together by bonds. And then here in the gases, we have fast-moving gas molecules. They are fast-moving. They're spaced out all over the place. There's not a lot of, um, they're not packed together. They like their space. They have an indefinite shape, an indefinite volume, which means they'll take the shape of the container and they'll fill a container up. Okay. Um, and I think that's about it. Oh, just one other thing. You have to remember that a fluid... A fluid is not just a liquid. A fluid is anything that flows. Okay, so let's look at these gas molecules. Are they flowing? Are they able to move past each other freely? Yes. So a fluid will be anything that is a liquid or a gas. All right, I think that's it. So uh, I'll see you in class.